Today we're going to talk about Munchausen by proxy and how that could be connected to the story of Gypsy Rose, the young woman pictured here. She's currently serving 10 years in prison for the murder of her mother. So let's get started. Closed captioning provided by Athena Moberg and CPTSDFoundation.org. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. Did you hear the story about Gypsy Rose, the girl whose mother had a severe case of Munchausen by proxy and actually made the girl think she couldn't walk and she was way sicker than she really was? Take a look. I'm going to begin the story from Dee Dee Blanchard's Facebook page that she shared with Gypsy Rose Blanchard, her daughter who was chronically ill. June 14th, 2015, someone posted on her page, that bitch is dead. And as you can see, everyone asked questions. People want to know what's going on. People wonder if Facebook was hacked. People assume they were hacked. Sounds like y'all are watching a movie. Everybody's asking what's wrong. This is not her. That's not her. Then should someone notify the local police? This sounds scary. You know, yes, someone should report it. And it goes on and on. Kimberly Blanchard says we live down the street from them and we're headed there now. This continues. We go on and on. Yes, call the police. Have your gun ready. People were really worried. This woman says what a heartless person to post something like that about anyone, especially these two. As you can see, when they start to figure things out, people are checking. They're there now, almost literally worried sick. If they happen to be joking, they're a sick, sick individual. Police are here. Everybody's looking for information. Nobody can find them. The car is there. Do they get in the house? It goes on and on. This person says, is Gypsy's power wheelchair there? When they go out, Dee takes her regular wheelchair. If her power chair is not there, they might be at the neighbor's house in the subdivision. Here we have a photo of the mother and daughter, two people who are missing. Here we have people praying, God, please bring them home safely. Everybody is just worried sick. Then there was the point at which they said they're missing, they're endangered. A neighbor says, I'm a neighbor and here's what I know. Dee Dee and Gypsy are not in their home. The sheriff's department is here and they've begun an investigation. What I was told by one of the deputies an hour ago is that they are not in the home, alive or not, and that there were signs of suspicious activity. There has been an endangered person's notice put in the local news. The neighbors have been interviewed and now they are investigating the property for anything that can lead to finding them. Someone from Habitat for Humanity comments, All of us at Habitat are hoping and praying for a positive resolution and D and Gypsy's safe and happy return. People are staying positive. The neighbor then says, this is now an active sheriff's department case and we may not get too much info until it's resolved. I'll try to let you know more as I find out, but we realize that whoever posted these messages, real or not, is able to see everything we posted. People are praying for them. And then this person says, D and Gypsy have been through a lot. They don't need this. They're very nice people. I hate that something bad always happens to her. But I will say, if someone has taken them against their will, that person will face a ton of charges and be put in prison. I'll pray that nothing has happened to them and that everything is okay. Then we see a post where someone says Gypsy is safe. The posts continue, and then someone says, can someone let me know how Gypsy's doing? I'm in Florida. I bet I met them both last year, and they have a heart of gold. That's when someone says, I'm really sorry to tell you, but Gypsy and her boyfriend have been charged with first-degree murder. As this Kelly Morton states, there's news that had come out that they were actually scamming for charities. On June 14th, 2015, the deputy sheriff in Greene County, Missouri, which is where Springfield is located, actually not that far from where I live, found the body of Dee Dee Blanchard face down in her bedroom in her home. Unfortunately, as you saw in in the previous segment, there was no sign of Gypsy Rose, who, according to Dee Dee, suffered from lots of physical health issues, including things like asthma, leukemia, muscular dystrophy, and a bunch of other chronic conditions. And, according to Dee Dee Blanchard, had the mental capacity of just a seven-year-old because of brain damage that she supposedly suffered as a result of her premature birth. When the police found Gypsy Rose the next day in Wisconsin, where she had traveled with her boyfriend that she met online, it turned out she was alive and well. But according to the Greene County Sheriff, things aren't always what they seem to be. Then came the shock and the sympathy when investigators announced that Gypsy Rose was actually an adult who didn't have any of the physical or mental health issues her mother said that she had for all those years. As the investigation continued, Police learned that some of the doctors who had examined her had found no evidence of these disorders. In one case, the doctors even suspected Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And just in case you don't know the definition of that, it is a mental disorder where a parent or 
other caregiver. Typically, it's the mother who then fabricates or exaggerates or even causes illness in her children or anyone else under their care in order to get sympathy or attention from people around them. Most people would accept her situation as true. Why wouldn't they? And both Gypsy and Dee Dee were benefiting from the efforts of various charities like Habitat for Humanity, like Make-A-Wish Foundation, like Ronald McDonald House. Now, Dee Dee, who obviously seems to have had Munchausen syndrome by proxy, was actually making her daughter pass herself off as younger and forcing her daughter to pretend to be disabled and chronically ill. During this process, she was subjecting her to all kinds of unnecessary medical procedures, surgery, medication, and controlling her through physical and psychological abuse. One expert on Munchausen said that this is the first case in 25 years of his experience where the abused child actually killed the parent. Gypsy Rose did plead guilty to second-degree murder, and she is currently serving a 10-year life sentence. After a very brief trial last month in November 2018, her boyfriend was also convicted of first-degree murder. And as you may remember, this case was actually the subject of a 2017 HBO documentary, Mommy Dead and Dearest. How did it get to this point? Well, let's talk about it. Reports from Dee Dee's family say that Gypsy Rose's birth could have been a little bit premature, which may have affected the development of her skull, but outside of that, she didn't have any other health issues. Her father, who was involved with her during this time, said that by the time Gypsy was three months old, her mother was convinced that she actually suffered from sleep apnea and started to take her to the hospital. And this caused repeated overnight stays with a sleep monitor and all kinds of other tests. Around the time she was seven or eight, she was reportedly riding on her grandfather's motorcycle and there was a minor accident. At that time, she suffered a scrape to her knee, and her mother said this was a visible sign of injuries that would require several surgeries to treat properly. And at that point on, she actually confined Gypsy to a wheelchair, even though it was obvious that there were signs that she could walk on her own on various occasions. Possibly as early as kindergarten, Gypsy stopped going to school. Her mother homeschooled her after that because of her supposedly severe illnesses. Gypsy reportedly did manage to learn how to read on her own with Harry Potter books. Another interesting point of note was that Dee Dee moved back in with her parents after she divorced Gypsy's father, who remarried. At that time, Dee Dee was accused of poisoning her stepmother's food with weed killer, and she was also convicted of a lot of minor crimes like writing bad checks. When Dee Dee's father and stepmother confronted her about the potential of poisoning her stepmother, Dee Dee fled with her daughter and moved. Not surprisingly, her stepmother's health returned to normal after she left. That was when Gypsy and her mother moved to Slidell, where they would eventually be displaced by Hurricane Katrina. They were living off of government assistance in public housing, which was all a result of Gypsy's diagnoses. Now, they spent most of their time at that time visiting specialists, at various medical centers seeking treatment of the illnesses that this woman said her daughter suffered from, which now she was adding in hearing problems and vision problems. Gypsy was subjected to a muscle biopsy, which if anyone knows how painful that is, it's painful. And there was no sign of muscular dystrophy found at that time, even though her mother insisted that she still had it. Somehow she was successful in getting treatment for these other supposed issues that she had. After she claimed to doctors that her daughter had seizures every few months, they eventually prescribed an anti-seizure medication. Well, now several surgeries were performed on her during this time. And of course, her mother regularly took her to the emergency room. When Hurricane Katrina Katrina devastated the area in August 2005, they left their apartment, which was ruined, for a shelter. This was set up for people with special needs. Dee Dee said that Gypsy's medical records, including her birth certificate, had been destroyed in the flood. So a doctor there, who had actually come from the Ozarks, suggested that they relocate to Missouri, and they were airlifted there the next month. So once they got to Missouri, they first lived in a rented home in Aurora, which is in the southwest part of the state. Then in 2008, Habitat for Humanity built them a small home with a wheelchair ramp, hot tub, as part of a bigger project on that north side of Springfield, where Dee Dee would eventually be killed. Many people opened their hearts to this little family because, my gosh, it was the story of a single mother whose daughter was severely disabled and they were both forced to flee because of Katrina. So, Obviously, this received a lot of local media attention and many people in the community would pitch in to help her. So they also ended up having tons of different charitable contributions. And we kind of talked about some of those, but they had enjoyed stays at the Ronald McDonald House, gotten free flights to seek doctors in Kansas City, free trips to Walt Disney World, backstage passes to the Miranda Lambert concert, several of them apparently. This was all through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. In addition to, of course, the free house they got from Habitat for Humanity. Her mother would shave her head so that it looked like she was actually going through chemotherapy, but in reality, she was not. But 
because of that, Gypsy would wear wigs or even hats to cover her baldness. And whenever they would leave the house, her mother would take an oxygen tank and feeding tube with them. And she would be fed the children's liquid nutrition supplement, Pediasure, well into her 20s. Her mother reportedly used physical abuse to control her, and she would always hold her hand in the presence of other people. And then whenever Gypsy would say anything that either suggested she really wasn't sick or seemed above her mental capabilities, her mother would squeeze her hand really tight. And according to reports, when they were alone, her mother would hit her with her hands or a coat hanger. While one pediatric neurologist in Springfield actually did question Gypsy Rose's diagnoses, her mother quickly removed Gypsy Rose from that doctor's care and the doctor never reported it to CPS or anyone else despite the fact that he was later criticized for that. Still he said at that time that he was told to treat them with quote-unquote golden gloves and this meant that he wasn't supposed to report them and he was told it wouldn't be believed anyway. Again he was later criticized for that stance. There was a blog that her mother ran before she passed away about Gypsy Rose and her situation and it was called the Gypsy Rose Trip. Here is a screenshot from that blog. After Gypsy Rose and Nicholas were arrested in Wisconsin, Nicholas's stepfather said that Gypsy had been walking just fine, talking, no problem, no wheelchair. He was interviewed and said there's nothing wrong with her. After all of these years of being infantilized and pitied because of her condition, Gypsy Rose later confirmed that in fact she did try to escape from her mother repeatedly. A Facebook post from a man who identified himself as Dee Dee's nephew gave a little bit of insight which kind of confirmed the Munchausen by proxy theory and he said that he had seen plenty of things that were disturbing when Gypsy was a small child and knew that Dee Dee was up to some quote-unquote evil things. He said, I never thought someone would be sick in that sort of way. He said, my family can all tell a few stories. I hope people can finally get the real truth that Dee Dee has been hiding all of these years. He said, the poor child was just as normal as the rest of us, but pushed to snap by her mother. He added that, in my opinion, she basically held Gypsy a prisoner and made her think she was severely sick and handicapped so that she could get a check from the government, free housing, and so on. Later, he added, she was a healthy girl, and one day she had a minor accident. She had a brush burn on her knee. Her mother took that to full extreme and would take would fake doctor visits, tell the family she needed surgeries to fix it. He said Dee Dee had her in a wheelchair. When her mother wasn't looking, Gypsy would push the other cousins around in it, jump on the trampoline, stuff like that. But when Dee Dee would see her, she had to get back into the chair. Once the family called Dee Dee out on the nonsense and she fled and never stopped going as far as she could. The story was covered in real time by Megan J. Peck, a reporter. The expert who Megan interviewed about this told her that victims of Munchausen by proxy often have PTSD as adults, which we understand, right? As well as having problems with losing touch with reality. And she says this brings a very important note to Gypsy's mental state when she committed the crime because if she was suffering from PTSD or unable to place her actions as having an effect on her reality, well, that's certainly a much different situation than straight up murder. The doctor said that her victimization was definitely a mitigating factor and that he thought at that time that a psychiatric evaluation should take place. While it's true that Gypsy did admit to her part in the murder, it was her boyfriend who actually committed the crime. She did provide him with the weapon and she also conspired with him to make her mother's death happen. With all of that being said, it's also important to note that Gypsy did make several attempts to escape her mother's imprisonment after becoming an adult. This is evidence of the level of toxicity that can be in one family. This is evidence that a toxic mother can ruin your life. And in this case, some might say that this woman got what she deserved. What do you think? So clearly this woman had Munchausen by proxy. Munchausen by proxy is about getting attention, intentionally hurting or making your child sick to get attention. I mean, that's what it is in layman's terms, right? What do you think about all that? This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you heard about Munchausen by proxy? Do you know anyone or did you yourself experience it as a child? And what would you like to share with us? This is a tough one today and I apologize for that, but I think it's an important topic we have to talk about. Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Really quickly, I just want to offer a shout out to my channel members. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being part of my mission and helping me get a little further with helping people discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. It, it just means more to me than I can say. Thank you so much, sincerely. My amazing channel members include Angela, Susan, Roxanne, Debbie, Lorenzo D, Life's Revival, Trisha, James, Marlene, Jen, Sara Lee, Delilah, Darla, Boku, Paul, Janet, Pier Lala, Laura, Charlie, Linda, Bible News Radio, Angel, Carrie, 
beautiful purpose, Alice, Cherie, Phoenix, and Linnell. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for hitting that join button. Your support really does mean a lot to me. Thank you again. All right, that's all I've got for you right now. But as always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you over there and right there. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.